Yes. Um, so we got inspired. This is the, um, the video we finished a few days ago. We got inspired by this Roman festival of Saturnalia to honor Saturn. Uh, people believed at the time that the days of Saturn were the happiest ones for humanity. We needed a little bit happy news and happy feedback to cheer up. Uh, we are in the countryside. We have a lot of space around us, a lot of cats. However, you feel that you are in confinement. Nevertheless, we are in lockdown and it is, is sometimes not very cheerful or the perspectives when you hear the news and you hear about how many people die every day. Uh, it's not very optimistic, the whole situation. However, we remember that also in difficult times, um, people took off and celebrated in one of the coldest months in, uh, in, in Italy, the Saturnalia. There has been also a Greek equivalent, the Kronia, an ancient Greek um, festival, which was celebrated a little bit earlier when it was still uh, warm outside. And people used to dance, used to welcome winter, used to love each other, used to let free themselves. So it was, in our days, we could call it a carnival. It was a mixture of Christmas and carnival because hope was born or would be born, uh, a new year would come. And at the same time, people discover the joy of partying, the joy of meeting other friends, of going out in the street, of dance, of drinking, uh, of eating, etc. So this orgiastic, it depended what kind of festival you wanted to have, an orgiastic festival or a festival of love, um, inspired us and to create the next video where we make use of our objects, textile, a sculpture, and jewelry to, to, to give a little bit feedback to the initial very simple story. The story is actually boy loves girl. It's something very basic in, in filmmaking. It's the most basic story you can imagine. Uh, we should also mention that um... Two, some weeks ago, um, we've seen a post on Facebook that I was shared uh, by a friend of us um, about a movie by Parajanov that was connected. Parajanov. Yeah. Um, and we watched it and we were really astonished. And we said, it's, it's amazing that um, this director made in the 1960s, he made movies of, of visionary uh, images using traditional uh, objects like carpets and household objects, uh, objects from the Dresses, church, icons, yes, yes, um, and put them together in a monumental uh, image that is um, it's it's open, open it's also to see. We should Send you also uh, a link. You can see it, watch it if you don't know his movies. Well, in the eighties, because he was not very uh, um, he was not very popular under the Soviet <laughs> regime. His movies could not be exported to international festival until the late eighties, and this is when I first heard and saw some fragments of his movies. That's why I thought it's the nineteen eighties, but it, they are much older and it's an amazing visual material and through th this work we want to say also that to find inspiration in other works of art in other film and art traditions uh, is for us and i think for many artists enriching it's not copying is like um get feedback get inspiration see the possibilities that other artists have explored and have perfectionized and see how we can use them also with a lot of respect uh, to the work uh, in, in our work. So what we're going to watch has nothing to do with Parajanov or with, for example, Fellini has made this fantastic film Satyricon in the, also I think in the 1960s, which is worth watching, is based on Petronius' novel on the last days of Rome, 
a very uh, abundant field with a lot of jewelry, textiles, uh, banquets, etc. Um, it's like getting inspiration of narratives where objects play a significant role to support the plot. And this is what we wanted to do as an experiment with our Saturnalia video.
All right. <laughs> so, um, well, we are not dancers or uh, Christoph is a performer. I'm also occasionally a performer, uh, but it's more the challenge to try to overcome the limitation. It's more in our mind, the limitation of our craft or possibilities that push us to, to go a little bit further and try something which would not have dared to do. And I must say that it's a lot of fun if you try it on your own or with a colleague or with a partner, um, a partner in life or a professional partner. It's a lot of fun to play uh, with these possibilities, how you can present something that you can't show face to face anymore, at least for the time being. And let me add yeah. that um, what, what we see a lot in the art business at this point is um, all these virtual exhibition rooms or chat rooms uh, where you can take part or you meet people. Either you sit at home like we do uh, and you see the, the bookshelves and the living rooms or you see the usual white cube aesthetics um, reproduced also in on the screen. And we both think that it's, it's time to leave the white cube of the gallery space, uh, as you may know, or the, the, let's say, theater stage that is um, only for a certain public, but also open it up uh, to a different audience that can join in. So it's an, it's an opportunity now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, however, we also have the white cube experience for let's ah. say um, when <laughs> yes. people ask, uh, okay, it was fun, it was nice. I liked very much what you had on your back or on your mm -hmm. dress. I would like to have a closer look. Then our proposal as a issue is to show also the objects. This is the gallery space we run uh, since 2015 is in Leonidio Arcadia and we have a more seasonal, more summer, autumn exhibitions. We had already like Easter. Easter also sometimes mm. and we have also hosted exhibitions by international artists. Uh, and this is also the studio we, we shot the video. So um, let me add some words to the works. This is a work called Fragments made of melted toy guns. And they were part of our last show, Polymos, in Munich, which took place in the gallery, uh, but mainly through the videos of the artists who took part. So this is one of, of the works. You can see it on our Polymos website. Yes. And the next work is a work I've been showing on our double exhibition, Wertvoll, Lafia. Valuable, in the Grassi Museum in Leipzig and in the Federal Agency of Environment in Dessau in Germany. It's made Lafia. of collected waste I found here in Leonidio at the beach, cans, bones, wood, anything I would find. This is a work I made also for last year's. The textile. We had a show here. There is a medieval tower, which is uh, also holds the municipal gallery, and the municipality gave it gave it to us. And we had a show uh, in June 2019 with five international textile artists. And Christoph created the two bags, our textile bags filled with rice and the, the lower parts uh, where you can see these yellow balls. This is bread. Um, so it's about collecting, conserving, but also um, having in, in stock for harder times and it will feed you. Well, that's uh, me, the, the textile um, 
pieces on the wall, it, they are knitted, partly knitted or crocheted and embroidered. So it's textile mix technique. I call them Georgios uh, from like the name George, because George Georgios in the Christian um, mythology and theology is, is a farmer. So when you are called George, your mission is to cultivate your georgian your piece of land like a farmer your soul is your piece of land and you should cultivate it like a farmer would take care of his land uh, so on the one side the red one is spring and the right one is winter and it's made with um with straps of of garments dresses shirts um that had a significance for me and I'm wearing Puma, it's a work of 2015. Wait a minute. Presented it in various international um, jewelry art festivals, and it's made of a Puma shoe. Uh, now it's the same, the Georgians. Uh, I'm very interested, not just in ancient concepts, but also in medieval uh, concepts and in concepts of Christian theology. First, because they are relatively unexplored by contemporary artists and they can be updated or as I say, I recycle them, I give them a new meaning. So this was Santa Barbara, uh, Santa Barbara, the one before, and this is Greta. Uh, I had it last year as a portrait of Greta Thunberg for this exhibition Birdfall in Leipzig and Dessau, which was on jewelry and ecology. Well, Greta was an idol, a picture, so I took her as, a, as my inspiration, but also something like a missionary. Um, she has been um, admired or accused of being something like a Christian missionary in the mission of uh, convincing people uh, for the real religion of environment and nature. Uh, this is St. Barbara. It's made of wool raw wool uh, that I, I have to, to clean and then um, bring it in some kind of form. Uh, San Barbara is a very interesting saint because she's also an allegory for the Trinity. And in my composition, the Trinity is a Trinity of three women. And these uh, two devils, demons, or whatever, uh, which you've seen also in the video. These are the first of a series of works that I started with, also with collected materials, uh, this time wood and plastic uh, connected. These yes. um, are a series of lamps. So you see that we, we mix the different uh, media and objects so these are also collected objects, recycled and, and waste objects, put together to practical, but also sculptural objects. And this is? Oh, this is um, a crocheted piece. Uh, it's like a Greek kurelu, like, a, uh, like a, a piece of textile, which is made of old, it's an old rug, uh, rugs they make in Greece uh, with a crochet technique using stripes of old garments. In this case, I use the Germany flags I collected in Hamburg after the mm -hmm. uh, championship, I think it was 2014, after Germany won, they threw out the little flags and I collected them and I made a, a huge stripe and I started crocheting it with a huge crochet needle. So it is an ironic look at Germany as the land of recycling, uh, because it's something like an obsession in Germany, you recycle everything or you uh, separate the waste. And I think that's it from the objects we, we have in our it. physical show. Um, and so this is, um, as, as I said, we are thinking of ways of combining the video, the physical, the pictures, uh, because we uh, have to answer this question for our next show, 
how what are we going to do if things do not work out and a new lockdown or many other obstacles come in our way because in March traditionally uh, we participate in the Munich Jewelry Week. It takes place together with um, the Design Business Week of Munich. And every year since 2015, we have an exhibition with international artists in a gallery. Um, last year, we had to postpone it. This year, we have to think in advance. Maybe we have a physical show and an online show at the same time. So it's also very useful for us to listen later to your feedback. Uh, or if you want to think about it, you can send us an email how you feel, how you think of this sort of communication, if the objects um, address you or uh, if you find it interesting or if it's boring, etc. And I think now we should go to the exciting part of this evening. This we thought of also about you sitting there with the necks starting to get stiff of another Zoom meeting. But this is the last video uh, the last archive video um, we made this summer after, immediately after the e-residency, Ellen of Sparta. Uh, this is the theme we're going to work also in the next e-residencies and probably also with the next show in Munich, Ellen, because Ellen is a woman, um, you can understand her story or herself in various ways. So we experimented a lot during this year, as Dancy Natasha mentioned. So we coached the participants to make their, their own story and video uh, and performance. And then we made our own story. And this is what you are going to watch now.
we play a lot with Greek mythology and Greek religion. It doesn't have to be very serious. It can also be full of humor or it can be sarcastic or it can be open. And this can also reflect on the story of the myth of Ellen. She is an object in man's fantasy. She's taken, she's brought somewhere, she's um, cast away, she's removed, she's reinstalled. Um, so it's, it's a very interesting theme and also very uh, contemporary for women now, even nowadays, I think. That's why we will keep working on this, uh, on this story, on this myth. And you may have seen that uh, the, the dance, when the effigy was unwrapped, the dance was already similar to what we did now. So um, we, we kind of reuse these elements um, as well as the sound uh, we were recycling in our latest video. Uh, it's also interesting for me, I read a lot, I like theater a lot and I like acting, but as an, am I'm an amateur, of course, and I read a lot about um, techniques and practices uh, actors use to come inside their role, and I think it's also interesting to take uh, inspiration, as I said at the beginning, from other crafts, especially when we have a narrative and to, to get inspiration from exercise, exercises actors use to understand their role. It, and it, and you get a different quality, this approach to your work, which is a piece of material. Uh, we see all these showrooms and online shows and stuff. So we thought about the circus. We organized the whole event and it's a bit like in a circus. Mm -hmm. Uh, where you do everything, in the end you play the wild animal, but you also play the one who, who sets up the tent and, uh, <laughs> and catches the horses and brings them back and yeah. feeds them. So uh, that's basically a very old way of, of uh, presenting culture mm -hmm. in a easily understandable way. For many artists like ourselves with um... Christoph is German, I was um, uh, educated in Germany. Um, the circus has another um, connotation. It refers to the very history of German art in the 20th century, of this going around and various surprises, also bad surprises. Uh, yes, Beckman painted a lot, but also other artists like Picasso painted in this early stage, um, circus artists, they are the, the very essence of art. They do everything. They dance, they jump, uh, they try to impress you. Everything is just a lie, but they give it in such a way as an illusion, but you, you believe that it's real. Uh, and it's cheap fun, and then it's over. It's like a bubble that explodes and that's over. And you go home a little bit lighter, uh, while the circus artists usually they have behind the mask in all these paintings behind the mask they have an existential crisis because they're never supposed to be high artists when I'm really up because it's like we are we are um, we are walking on a string and there is nothing underneath especially in these times it's mm. very very hard for artists we see that in all countries, in Europe, maybe in the States as well, but especially in Europe, like um, art is not taken very seriously, um, especially now during the COVID crisis. Or, um, yes, or it's taken seriously in the sense that uh, either it's understandable in abstract terms from a certain community, that also gives the, the honors to certain artists that play with, a, with the same standards, aesthetical standards, and um, also philosophical standards uh, or economical standards. And if you don't play along with it, uh, you will not be part of this community. But the, the question, the big question is, um, how stable are these communities? And 
um, how can you overcome also an, an, an dependency of, of these communities uh, or mental dependency uh, and free yourself of, of certain rules that are maybe only local. So if you go somewhere else, and this is a, a very good uh, possibility now with, with the internet that you can go still despite not being able to travel, you can go still somewhere else and find a community and find people who uh, understand or who, who like your work, if not around you in the place where you are.